and um, good to see all of you here. I'm so glad to be able to talk about recent work I've done uh, to formalize um, a data quality assessment framework for the chief government data steward in New Zealand government. I recently started, that, that office was recently initiated um, in the past two years as, long, as well as a chief digital uh, steward. Um, focusing on data, looking at capabilities across agencies. Um, and they were looking for someone to come bring um, experience and uh, industry knowledge into their um, advice um, bureau. They have a um, website where they keep lots of different kinds of advice on data governance, data management, and um, particularly uh, things like open data program our um, flagship um, advice bureau. So this program or assessment framework was done in a year, a deliberate write-up of my work at the transport agency and modified and adapted to an all of government context. Um, further to context, I plan to talk about just uh, its introductory material, three, three aspects um, to bear in mind in the design of this particular framework. It's meant as an exemplar, not as a to-do list. <laughs> so it's a abstract from a data architecture perspective. Um, it's a process model. Um, essentially the topics, you know, or, or it's, it's could, you could say it's biased in the sense that it's quite data governance oriented, but um, discussion here of data governance and data management and the differences and roles and responsibilities, which is practice-based. The second area is that, you know, it's important for this um, to be realized that this is in the context of data quality as a program, not as a particular project. Um, mainly um, it's a journey and um, de developed in cycles of capability. Um, that's because we recognize across agencies that they're at all different levels of maturity in, the, in both data governance and data management. Uh, and that Lastly, in particular, as I say, it's a process example. It's meant to show the highest level results or outcomes of developing these processes. So all agencies are doing some sort of data quality issue management and remediation. They probably call those activities by different names and they're likely performed by IT. Um, in, you know, there's not necessarily a recognition that there should be business stakeholders involved in remediation or people involved in the process of delivering critical information for the agency's mission. Uh, here is to bring forward a, an example process which is based on standards that articulate best practice for such a process. So um, in order, you know, the data governance, data management conversation really is to, to highlight um, there's an important separation of concerns here. You know, data management makes sure that information is managed properly. Um, data governance ensures that data is managed to achieve business goals. What does this mean? It means that governance is really focused on oversight and, and goal setting. And uh, management is more focused on provisioning or should be focused on provisioning and monitoring. It's often a lot of finger pointing as to which part of your IT business organization should be fixing data problems, data quality problems. And that's often to do with a loose recognition of the different hats or different roles that are necessary to really have both sides of um, life cycle managed appropriately to assure good data quality. So governance is responsible for resourcing, authorizing, um, and creating policy, where data management is more about delivering system projects, performing monitoring, and providing the technical talent to data projects, um, and possibly yeah, provisioning, working with IT to provision data platforms. But they don't have a lot to do with the business mission or um, understanding the um, outcomes um, or, the, or the opportunities um, that are possibly there for data and new products and new services that are supported by quality data. 
Um, it does make a few assumptions as well in terms of fundamental capabilities. And some of our agencies are quite low in their capability. So then we'll have a hard time understanding this, but you know, basic catalogs need to be there in terms of, um, I guess with data and scope, as we put it. Um, a lot of data catalogs are there as lists of data, but we also need to manage data as an asset and understand the risks and business services associated to that data to make it more conversational with the business owners, process owners. Also a capability to manage um, and the production and distribution of data products resulting from good data, treating data as a valuable input, meaning the whole life cycle, not just capturing the data, but what happens when it's put into a, a warehouse, what happens when it's turned into an analytics product, what happens when it, after it hits a dashboard and influences um, behaviors in, in business partners or business functions. Um, how does that full life cycle get addressed? Um, and really it's to say that there's this important conversation between the two sides of the house, the governance side and the management side. These are emerging um, fields, of course, so everyone will have a different level of capability. Um, the second point, data quality, looking at it as a program rather than a project is quite important because of all those coordination activities. I mean, my program does this outreach and training work um, to get people on the same page, even have the same terminology for data quality concepts and to get um, issue reporting done and in, encourage issue reporting. Um, for many years, data quality problems are left on the cutting room floor and people have given up on, on where to turn because, you know, IT data management don't know how to resolve things and there are no standing governance groups to have conversations with. So sometimes you have to bring up these basic services um, and get issue reporting working across different groups. And I guess what I'd say too is I developed a I developed a pilot project to go through the whole cycle and learn. Um, and everyone in that process learned. Uh, and I use that they are ambassadors to the process for other teams to get going on their own projects for data quality improvement. Um, really important through all that was to build the right relationships. And those relationships have to be enduring from one data quality process to the next one, because many of the same people are involved across the enterprise um, and many are specialists to just a particular project. So the, the, the person who's the quality program manager has to be able to main it, create and manage relationships across a wide, a wide variety of stakeholders, all those shapers of the data and reuse those relationships, hopefully to the next quality projects. Next to the data quality as a process concept, here is the process, by the way, this is the data quality framework. So um, I'll talk more to it in detail shortly. Just as a high level idea of this process, you know, there's three core components. They're the, the colored boxes um, with feedback built in to assure sustainability. This is important stuff that I learned um, actually in my informatics work. Um, at Landcare Research, you know, about building sustainable systems, um, ensuring that there were actual, you know, outputs from a process that became inputs to another and, and work through all the, all the people who are involved and who can build and improve those feedback loops is just as important as those who can build the fundamental processes. Each one of these three are complex. Uh, However, at the highest level, you want to be able to enable prioritization of quality issues um, through, uh, and I'll explain that shortly. You want to be able to actually drive um, quality improvement through good requirements, data quality requirements, because measuring without requirements is is sort of a lot of busy work of measuring quality, understanding the requirements in the context of the business will narrow the level, narrow, sorry, the number of measures that you have to do, make them more relevant and keep them um, in use uh, 
to actually report the health and status on data sets. So these, these mechanisms here are kind of the outcomes of, of three complex layers of processing um, that happen kind of at, um, across, the, across the data quality program. These were based on international standards. I'll just point that out up front. Um, the data governance ones, which talk about three layers where you evaluate, this is why in this assessment framework, <clears throat> you're evaluating priorities, you're evaluating value and risk and so forth. Um, you direct activity through requirements, direct measurement activity in particular, and do the monitoring, continue the monitoring in order to get at trend analysis and you'd be able to tell if we're getting better or worse at quality, um, hopefully better as we are measuring toward the requirements that the business um, specify. This was also informed by industry models, really important three key industry models. I use the 10 steps framework by Danette McGilvray, which was published in her second edition last year. Her 10 steps framework takes you through really important things about understanding the business context of a problem, working through the environment considerations like the data platform, how, how the data itself is managed and passed from one process to another, whether or not there's more sophisticated, um, you know, ELT or ETL or however you want to call it, processes going on, moving data from primary operational systems to analytics platforms or data lakes or data warehouses. And all of that lineage stuff is really important to understand where the data has been and how it's been transformed. Um, a really great framework as well to sort of enable agencies to start where they are and recognize the roles that they're already playing in this framework. It's called the Non-Invasive Data Governance Framework by Rob Seiner. It's very helpful to listen to Rob a few times. He's at Dataversity. He goes through what he calls, um, you know, everybody's a, a data steward um, discussion. And it talks about the wider involvement uh, of your specialists that work in analytics and work in business analysis, as well as those that crunch the numbers and do the measurement of quality. And that's a really simple but really important message. We tend to keep the data quality stuff in the back room or down to the individual's responsibility. And it, it does involve some checking with your peers and other perspectives on how you're doing with the measurements themselves, like using consistent measures, for example, using standard measures, for example, very important. Um, that's where the conformed dimensions of data quality come in with Meyer's work. He took 16 different data quality dimension type measures, brought all the definitions and terminology together and came up with a list, which is very helpful of I think 28, you know, you don't need them all, but you can have uh, quite a good choice amongst um, very well-researched and utilized data quality measures. This resolves an issue that we're, we, can, we, can, we have witnessed that agencies are using lots of data quality measures, but they're not very comparable. They're not using the same terminology. They're not using the same formulas. They're not using the same concepts. Um, it's confusing. To be fair, these concepts have developed over 25 years, but everybody picks a flavor and they sort of ignore the rest. Um, it, it has been a dialogue within its own discipline for some time, and Myers has helped to uh, rectify that into a single set of, of useful um, conformed measures. So I'm going to move now to what I promised, uh, talk about the three components in this model and a bit of the feedback loops. At this point, though, are there any questions? or comment. More clear as mud, cool. <laughs> right, next then, um, I'm gonna shift to these three components. Just remembering we're talking about prioritization of issues, improving requirements and performing standardized evaluation and reporting. As I've mentioned, each of these is kind of complex. So the sentences here, I wrote these sentences here for your takeaway. So I'll say them briefly, which is the 
data quality issue management, impact analysis, and value assessment each have um, you know their own processes, which you can have as much or as little process as you your organization can tolerate. You know, based on your capability. It's important, though, that you recognize that you have to have um, some fundamental way of trapping information about quality issues and tracking those issues and working them through those people who shape the data who can help resolve those issues. There's been significant research in, again, 25 years to show that 90% of the data issues are resulting from conflicting business processes or from outdated um, data structures that have simply been acquired and, and moved from one business to another without re redesign, um, you know, coping with what is rather than reshaping and redesigning things to meet new needs. Um, these are all environment factors on, on the data which need to be analyzed. Um, mostly you can get um, a lot of information out of your architecture artifacts, but really it comes down to um, plain old systems analysis work. Um, basically, we get the reports and, and the logging going, um, then root cause analysis, which as I said, has, there are, there's some good literature included in the framework here, detailing 15 typical root causes and looking through um, you know, who you would interview to actually get to um, the facts and knowledge of your particular data environment. Um, getting through a business impact assessment, which means you're talking to business people or people who are responsible for the mission of the, um, of the organization. And yeah, lastly, promoting your issues via remediation recommendations to your governance groups who have the authority to resource and and make um, necessary changes to the um, operating environment if if those are in fact the cause of your data quality problem. Um, working through the requirements is really important, the second one, and it talks about this section and there's um, a whole paper on this, asking the right questions about data quality requirements, as well as system requirements. When systems are built, essentially requirements are gathered, but it's typically about the user interface or the reporting needs and, and not a lot about data quality issues, such as you know onward sharing, um, issues of resolution, issues of how to aggregate um, certain fields properly solving it sort of once for all. Um, you get these kind of things and get solved ad hoc much later and in varying fashion. So the um, requirements gathering aspect is quite important. Um, it says here, you know, typical uses for the data tolerances for completeness or precision in the data and, and requirements for currency, you know, for monitoring or decision making, all of these requirements could be gathered in, in the papers written for business analysts you know, who are next to the business and um, can get the interviews working such that they get these, these kinds of answers that are relevant for onward use of the data. Um, and evaluation and reporting um, mentioned before 19157, that's a uh, data quality standard for geospatial information, which lays out um, a framework for evaluating quality and then a specific set of reports that consistently report how you measured the quality, the context, you know, the scope of the data used, the the purpose, the reason you, you needed to measure the quality, um, you know, any trend, connection to trends, Obviously, you need a bigger picture, you know, than a couple of measures to talk about how the quality is currently, or what we call how well the data is conforming to requirements, which requirements, et cetera. So this area here, consistent measurement, consistent evaluation, and consistent reporting, these this is the biggest problem in general um, when getting at any trends of data quality and um, 
libraries of tools exist to assist this. So all the, the paper does is bring those forward and you can choose what is relevant for your particular organization. Next, uh, talk about these feedback loops. <clears throat> so again, this is the model. Um, my dialogue or my conversation box is in the halfway in the way of my slides. So I'll do my best here on the right side. But the um, really important conversation at the outer loop is between what I call the business domain governance group or the data governance group and the enterprise data management team. For the reasons I said before, you know, there's a separation of concerns there. The governance group should be providing uh, the improvement plan for the data, including resourcing. The data management team should be responding with a communications plan showing how they're achieving the plan, <clears throat> sorry, progress to plan, as it were, and identifying the stewards and keeping the stakeholders informed. And it's a very simple feedback loop, but it's amazingly difficult to achieve this level of clean communication. And this, this alone has mitigated an enormous number of quality issues in our crash system at transport. Um, we had we had all kinds of messaging going back and forth between parties that thought they could fix things. Um, never really a clear plan, never really a clear sense of progress to plan, and quite a bit of confusion on the stakeholders side as to what exactly was going on to fix the problems. Um, a lot of noise, in other words, not a lot of signal. So this helps quite a bit to clarify what is planned, what's being done, and who needs to know. Likewise, or I should say inside, I call them the inner loops um, in this framework are far more interesting. Um, essentially, the prioritization of issues can help inform and refine your requirements as well. Okay, so that's helping to develop an evidence base that's a bit more effective. You develop your evidence base of issues by logging, doing your impact analysis, having those discussions at, at the business impact level will help a lot in prioritization. This will help you inform your requirements. Better requirements means you have more relevant criteria and metrics. Which, which assists in effective and efficient performing of, of standardized evaluation. And outcome from that is also, as I put it here, enabling comparable assessment with performance of standardized quality measurement, it in turn will enable more robust and relevant health and status. And that's what we're looking for at the management level, in the governance level, they want to know what's the state of things, how healthy is this important data set you've got us to identify as, as a key asset to manage. What am I looking at? You know, I need to look at the health and status of it, and I need to understand the, you know, articulate the value and risk of it being non-conformant. The value of it working for us and the risk if it doesn't. Uh, these are the business decisions that the governance group needs to need to have in focus with the help of the business analysts. I note there uh, in this in this the entities that are conversing, you know, here. Um, so the in the first loop, the business domain group talking with the enterprise management team. And these secondary loops or the inner loops, it's quite important that you're involving the newly arrived data analysts and data scientists. For for many government agencies, this is new stuff, right? Another whole team messing around with the data. Um, those people are finding because they're creating new data products every day they're finding your data quality issues they're the ones that need to be involved in reporting uh, issues to someone to, and they're not sure where to turn um, they can also run these metrics they also are doing it every day they're they're running metrics and and doing quality assessment on data to see if it's suitable for their project every day um, knowledge is going on the cutting room floor because they have nowhere to report their bumps and bruises with the data. Any problems they have, they're keeping to themselves. Um, so giving them these mechanisms to report 
information to be involved in the conversation of metrics and involved in the conversation of requirements is actually utilizing their knowledge and experience more efficiently and more effectively. Likewise, business analysts have a relationship, usually, as I mentioned, have a relationship with the initial stages of a data resource being developed because they're building new systems. They're involved in the design and the collection of requirements. They don't often get to see the round trip, you know, what happens after the system's been built, how, this is, how the data gets used in new products and services. So this will involve them also in terms of the priority conversation, involve them in how the data is meeting the business needs and give them the opportunity to describe and work through some of this health and status information to make it more effectively understood by all those middle business process managers as well as the overall data owner. They're the interpreter between um, those various business services and the data management function. So far, any questions? Uh, all, all good. Please all continue. quiet? Yeah. Okay, we're getting close to the end now. Right? So two more slides. Um, so I just want to point out that I heavily used standards to develop this process. I'll back up a second to this process just to say, you see, it's highly, um, this is quite abstract um, for a reason. You know, um, all the standards point to the same three capabilities you need. Um, how you develop them, how you deploy them is based on the capability of your own organization. But this is the, the outcomes of having good logging, good analysis of issues, so you can prioritize. The outcome of requirements, I should have probably put something like improved with a um, you know, passive voice. It, you want improved data quality requirements, you really want current data quality requirements. Um, currency is maintained through knowledge and and relate in relating use of data to the measurement of quality of data. And likewise, being able to do any kind of standardized uh, evaluation is critical for trend analysis to understand how the data is doing. These standards here I provided and they're in small print because there's a bit of information, but importantly, um, they've influenced the design of the principles and components of the modules, you know, of this framework. I used a couple from the governance, particularly the data governance standard, came out in 2019. Three from the data quality suite in um, ISO 8000, and two from the geospatial domain. Um, one is uh, mentioned 19157, which is our data quality general requirements, recently revised um, and available now as this, uh, which means public comment. Um, probably going to fall, um, I don't know what it means, completely revised by the end of 2022, ready for um, purchase, I suppose. Um, and I used this other one, which was the quality assurance of data supply. And I use that because in transport and in many public sector agencies, they actually don't produce their own data. They, um, they buy it. And they don't really do well at explaining what they need in the purchase agreement um, in terms of quality, especially if it's ongoing. Like we have traffic loops. We have... Uh, Gosh, we have ongoing um, data collection, which is subcontracted. Uh, we have, yeah, hundreds of thousands of dollars involved in those contracts. And surprisingly, um, apart from saying it needs to be at, to us at a certain date, um, there's very little quality requirement built into the contracts. Um, this helps to actually help you um, create some of those words, those phrases that need to be in your supply contracts. Uh, let's see, and also the toolkit um, coming up. So toolkit wise, a lot of people ask me about this. So I mean, architects like this less than my practitioners, I'll say. Um, but a lot of people want tools. I created a 
simple set of tools to come with the framework. So the framework involves the diagram, um, explanatory notes for the diagram, and, re and rationale for the design, as well as essentially people and process oriented tools, not technology based. We can always buy technology stuff to do data quality measures and, and, and automate, but we really have to get the fundamentals right in terms of people and process. For people, it's um, record keeping support um, in terms of templates for how to do your data quality issue management and the guide for data governance groups on how to have um, those effective conversations to get relevant policy developed and re remediation plans uh, agreed and uh, supported, meaning resourced to, to repair important data quality issues. In the process area, this metrics or measures standardized, that customized, I'm sorry, that consolidated group of, of measures uh, provided by Myers. And there's a whole set of measures as well for the geospatial information through 19157. And finally, um, a guide for the relevant standards, which details in, in this previous slide, you know, how exactly these standards informed the framework. There are some considerations, I guess I wanted to wrap up with, you know, to say, what did I learn out of this? Um, you know, I think, I think it was important in terms of principles to maintain a flexible approach to realize that this was an exemplar and not the two, not the perfect framework um, to make it outcomes oriented rather than very specific itemized process lists. You can come up with your own process lists from the standards as well as what you're already doing. The really important thing is to realize where you already are and your capability and that you can map your capabilities currently into this uh, exemplar process. The goals, you know, very important principle two and three, you know, is really about it must do, do a lot to improve the remediation activity. That's clear up the communications, that's um, make the roles right, that's um, make sure measures are associated to requirements. Um, make sure that the health and status information flows back, back up to the data quality, data um, governance group. Make sure that the data management group is comfortable with their new relationship to these business sci data scientists and um, business intelligence people. I mean, there's a whole lot of improvement there for communication and remediation that um, the, the framework addresses and enable or make sure of uh, comparable assessment is a very important principle to this. Um, hence the sticking to, you know, industry defined standards for measures. Um, the design goals here is already outlined with people centered um, approach rather than technology. Yeah, continuous improvement is a critical aspect because the first time out with a pilot, you'll get a few ways around the, ro the ropes, around those links, and, and then you realize we're a little bit short in this capability. We could have done better over here, you know. So it's always good to view it in, in the context of building up better capability. And that it's a shared responsibility that all these roles have, have an important part to play. Uh, and, and that data management and data governance don't have to be at uh, odds. No, they just have to realize where they're sharing where they're sharing the res responsibility for the outcomes um, of the data quality process. I found um, it helped a lot to, to start with standards and to start with industry practice, um, starting with your peers as well. Um, the challenge I thought was to get some data governance groups off the ground um, and to get them taking to take responsibility for remediation plans because this was uh, something that was new to our organization so they had to find a way to not only you know make the time to meet but make the time and the effort to look for resources to actually invest in the data and invest in remediation plans um, i'd say um, for for any anybody taking on a data quality program you need to think about your own organization's culture and the governance activities um, that would be practical 
so you can make real improvement, but look at it from the business process point of view uh, rather than just the technical aspects of, of data creation, data storage, and so forth. This, all these people are shaping the data as your, as your organization has moved into analytics and other um, data products, data sharing arrangements. And yeah, try to keep your, if it's possible, making the data quality a program rather than the project was quite important, as I say, because I was able to retain all these stakeholder relationships and, and re, redeploy those relationships um, and not wear everybody out to look at every problem. Um, I, I carefully balance, you know, the talents against the problems um, and try to try to make it realistic for, for people to have in, in their work scope. So this will be published soon on the New Zealand Government Data Capability resource website. This is uh, the address data.gov.nz. Um, we'd love to have feedback on the framework um, and to say that the actual guides and stuff will be shortly available. Um, data lead at stats.gov.nz will be the, the home of the, of the formal documents. Currently it's in soft launch. So it'll be formally published soon. And if you wanna get in touch with me at any time, um, Happy to speak to this again um, in your own organizations or over, yeah, over chat, over video. Here I am at transport.